I greet you in Jesus' name with our, my Lord and Savior. Uh, you are watching us from PCA Dairy Parish, and we are glad to thank God that during this week, uh, the Youth Week that is, we are celebrating from Monday to Sunday, we have been given a scripture that is Daniel chapter 6 and from verse 1 to 9 and also the book of uh, Second Peter. And we thank God that at this moment we are celebrating and having our youth together, celebrating the blessings that the Lord has given unto them and thinking about Daniel, whom we see victory in him. We are going to go through the text, and I believe all of us are going to be blessed of the Lord. I'll read from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, from verse 4 to 9, but I'll request you to read Daniel 6, verse 1 to 21. And the reading goes, from verse 4, Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded, our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and his officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement. We are administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and government governors that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, you'll be thrown into the den of lions. And now your majesty issue and sign this law so it uh, cannot be changed. An official law of the, med of the meds and patients that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are thankful this moment we are going to listen from you. We are asking for your blessings as we go through this portion of the scripture. Let your Holy Spirit minister and tuition of us, all the viewers, all of us that are here. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. From the portion of the scripture, we can learn a number of things. And I want to give you a few things about Daniel. During this time, Daniel was over 80 years, and he was one of the top three administrators. He worked efficiently than the rest of the other administrators, even the officials and the governors. Darius, King Darius was very happy, and Daniel earned a place of respect in him. Daniel portrayed a very good picture of whom he was to this pagan king. Daniel again, he represented God to the employer. Therefore, King Darius and the other people around him, they knew very well that there is a God who is worshipped by Daniel. During this, his time when he was serving the king, he made enemies at his working place and they were very much mad on him because he was doing good things to the king, but they were not happy about that because they were not able to serve efficiently to the king. Today, I would like to tell you that when you excel, some people may work and plan to hold you back or even bring you down. The jealous administrators, 
and officers couldn't find anything on Daniel's life to criticize. So they attached or they attacked his religion, meaning his faith in God, and this is why they planned among us themselves that they would request the king to put a decree that for the next 30 days, nobody else, either human or divine, would be worshipped apart from the king alone. Today, you need to know that any time you see some blocks ahead of you, don't worry about the blocks or the hindrances. You need first to think, why are the hindrances ahead of you? A hindrance is about to come on Daniel's life. A hindrance is about to be in front of Daniel. How is Daniel going to handle this? The law that was passed, even the king could not change it. Daniel stood alone now, but he continued what he believed in. He prayed for three days, for three times a day, and I can say that Daniel had a disciplined life, and especially in the area of prayers. Daniel never let any pressure or threat can cut into his prayer time. He used to pray for three times in a day, and surely he never let this issue, this hindrance, affect him. Prayer is our lifeline to God as Christians. He never had his daily prayer routine. Daniel was found guilty according to the law and plan that was planned by the enemies and Daniel was thrown to the den of lions. In the den of lions, we thank God that he sent an angel who protected him. In accordance with the Persian custom, on the other hand, it is good for all of us, viewers, wherever you are watching us, to know that in that Persian custom, the cruel punishment, if it was not true, was transferred to those who conspired against the king by provoking him into an unjust action. The evil officials, their families, were all thrown in. I never hit the ground. They were put in a den of lions because they provoked the king into an unjust action. Daniel was saved in God's hands. Today, how was, we need to ask ourselves, how was Daniel able to overcome this? I have three points to consider to be able to answer this question. And the three points I believe will help us as Christians to be able to stand all the obstacles that are put ahead of us. Daniel maintained his discipline in God's faith. We as Christians, we also need to maintain our discipline in our Christian life. Daniel was very prayerful, and each and every day he would pray for three times. This means his connection with God was maintained, was taken care of, and each and every day he would start with God, he would spend the day with God, and Daniel would end the day with God. Therefore, as Christians today, we need also to maintain our disciplines in our Christian life. Let the word of God, the Bible, be always near you. Not just near. You need to open and read. You need to have the word of God with you each and every day. We need to read it. 
We need also to reflect upon the word of God. We need to use it. And we need also to apply this word of God. Somebody said, the word of God, you need not fight the word of God. You need only to face it as it is. Receive it, accept it, and let the word of God work in your life. As a Christian too, I need, we all need to maintain our prayers, our prayer lines with our God. Each and every day, don't let a day end. Start the day with God, spend the day with God, and end the day with God in prayer. The other thing that we need to do, as Christians, we need to come together. We need not to neglect the gathering of coming together. Together in a fellowship where we praise our God, where we share what God has blessed us throughout the week or even any other teaching that you have learned. And in a fellowship, this is where each one of us grows spiritually and we, are, we, we encourage each other, we uplift each other in our faith and we are able to stand against all the trials and even tribulations and any obstacle ahead of us we are able to overcome it. Another thing in maintaining our discipline in our Christian life is our testimonies. When you are with people, make sure, let those people around you know your faith, your stand with your God. Let them know that you are born again. Let them know that you believe in Jesus Christ let them know that you belong to a holy God and holiness is part of you and holiness is your portion. Daniel, he maintained his discipline in God's faith. A second point that will help us to understand how was Daniel able to overcome this is that Daniel stood for God, and in turn, God also stood for Daniel. When Daniel was thrown into the den of lion, he was not able to fight the lions. He didn't have even the strength to do so. But through his testimony, when the king came very early in the morning to check on him. Daniel said, My God sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. Therefore, Daniel was able to feel the warmth of the lions, also the warmth of another partner, an angel who also stood with Daniel. And it's good at this time to note that the king never slept a whole night. Imagine, guarded there by his soldiers in a very good place, maybe a good, a very good bed, a good mattress, and even good blankets and sheets and maybe even better than what I'm saying, but he never slept. But for Daniel, I think maybe he slept because he enjoyed the warmth of the lions inside the den of lion. And in the morning, he was there to give a testimony that God sent an angel. Therefore, the moment you stand for God, despite of the challenges, all the problems ahead, ahead of you, the problems, they don't have the power to withstand the power and authority of the person you believe in. And in this time, they never saw God, they were just seeing Daniel, the king, and the other workers. They never thought of Daniel, who is behind Daniel. And God was with Daniel. It is also good to note that all the enemies were thrown 
into the den of lion. And the Bible, I like the way the Bible is put here. In verse 24, maybe part B, where I read the whole, the whole verse. Then the king gave orders to arrest all the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. The lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the foot. They hit, hit the floor of the den. Nobody hit the floor of the den. They were torn into pieces. All the wives and all their children because they made the king become angry because they lied to him. Every time you stand for God, God will do his own way. He will stand for you, he will fight for you, and he will make sure he will punish your enemies when they are seeing you. We thank God because of many things that he has been doing to us as Christians and more is coming, believe in him. My third and my final consideration of what made Daniel to overcome is that he maintained the call of uncommon excellence. When we think about what is excellence, excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. And this is what we see in Daniel. When Daniel entered the gates of the Darius, of the kingdom of Darius, he entered there in faith, in the faith that he was in. He believed in God. He worshipped God. He was very prayerful. And he had that connection with his God. He entered the gates and all the doors of the king in that quality of being outstanding as a good person who knew his God. If you read chapter 6, verse 4b, there are three things that are mentioned there, and I'll read it. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. But B, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. And the verse, the portion that I want us, all of us, to hear and see the excellence that was in Daniel is part B of it. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded, our only chance to find grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. Daniel was somebody who was faithful, responsible, and trustworthy. He portrayed a good picture to those around him. Everybody, from the king, all the officers, all the governors, and even his, the, the other two that were working with him as administrators, they knew very well that in Daniel there is something that is extra. Instead of them coming to Daniel to learn so that they may also grow into it, they were not happy. And therefore, that's why earlier we saw they planned to do away with him, but we thank God they never succeeded. In our Christian life, as I conclude, we will be facing a lot of challenges. And these challenges, sometimes you'll wonder, will I be able to overcome them? You want to bribe your way to a good job? or you bribe your way to a promotion, or you want to do something, and since you are seeing all the hindrances, all the obstacles ahead of you, you want to leave some of the things that you believe in to be able 
to open that door. And maybe that door cannot be opened by anything else apart from maybe bribing or apart from maybe lying or cheating or get away that is not godly into a certain area, a way that is full of sin and you want to achieve by disobeying God, by doing some, anything that is evil, either in the eyes of God, evil by the rules of, a, of the community, and in that, I want to tell you, you will not succeed. But if you do like Daniel, you'll succeed. Because in the three points you have seen that Daniel, he maintained his discipline in God's faith, May you also maintain the disciplines of a Christian. Love God. Read the word of God. Pray. Fellowship. And even seek God daily. Again, Daniel stood for God. And God stood for him. You need to stand for God. And God will stand for you. Don't worry. Face all the challenges. God is coming over. He's just around the corner to come and save you to come and start with you and the devil will not be able to withstand God. And finally, as Christians, we need to maintain the call of uncommon excellence. Surely, start tall in all good things. And when you start tall in all good things, definitely, surely, God will also accompany you to achieve all this. As Christians, we can have our Daniels of today. You can be a Daniel of this moment. We can be Daniels in our houses. We can be Daniels in our country. We can be Daniels in our church. We can be Daniels in our community. And in this, the entire world will know there is God that we worship. May God bless you all, and may you continue to reflect um, from this word and you learn more through the Holy Spirit. May God bless us all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment and we ask you God to help us like, do like Daniel, to be able to overcome as Daniel maintained his discipline in, in you, he trusted you. Help us also as Christians to maintain our disciplines, to make sure that our Bibles, they're not just in our shelves. We need to keep our Bibles in our hearts and in our minds by reading and meditating on the scriptures. We need to have that connection with you by maintaining our daily talk with you, to pray, to, pr to worship you, and Father also, a time to tell others about your goodness, to give our testimonies to other people around us so that they may know we are different. Father, we are also asking you to help us, God, start for you, and we believe at the right time you'll also stand for us, for the world to know that our God is not far from us. Thank you because you stood for Daniel. When he was not able, you sent an angel, and all the lions were not able to harm Daniel. And Jehovah God, finally we are asking you to help us, God, maintain the call of uncommon excellence. You've called us as Christians, Jehovah God, Help us, Father, to stand tall for what we believe in. Help us, Jehovah God, wherever we are, to maintain our call. And Jehovah God, in this, those people around us will learn more and more. And when they come to us, you'll be telling them the secret is believing in God. Father, we praise you. Bless all these people that are listening that are watching, whatever they are, and whatever challenges they are in, Jehovah God, there may be more than the Daniel's challenges. Jehovah God, we are asking for your blessings, and this is the time to show the whole world, 
to show all the entire universe that you are together with your people. Come and deliver us, O God. Come and start with us, and victory is sure. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless all of you, and have a nice time as you continue to meditate on the word of God. Amen.